Good morning. Welcome to the 29th annual White Coat Ceremony at the University of Illinois College of Medicine. I'm Dr. Raymond Curry, and I have the honor of serving the college as Senior Associate Dean for Educational Affairs. We've spent the week welcoming the entering class of 2027 to the University of Illinois College of Medicine and to the profession of medicine. They've met their first faculty advisors and mentors, the dedicated faculty um, and talented staff who serve our students, they've met their first patients, and very importantly, they've begun to know each other. And now, to conclude the week's activities, it's my great pleasure to begin this ceremony, a ritual that has become a treasured event at many medical schools around the country. Before I begin, I would like to recognize the members of our platform party. First, our keynote speaker, Dr. Monica Vela, Professor of Medicine and Director of the Hispanic Center of Excellence. Our Chancellor of the University of Illinois at Chicago, Dr. Marie Lynn Miranda. The Executive Dean of the College, Dr. Mark Rosenblatt. Associate Dean for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, Dr. Gloria Elam. Associate Dean for Undergraduate Medical Education, Dr. Heather Hyman. And Assistant Dean for Admissions and Recruitment, Stacy Walters. Those I've introduced so far have college-wide roles. That is, their responsibilities extend to the Peoria and Rockford campuses as well as the Chicago campus. I will now introduce those members of the platform party who are part of the Chicago campus administration. The Associate Dean for Faculty Development uh, and co-leader of the Gold Humanism Honor Society, Dr. Mamuna Hasnain, and the other co-leader, Dr. Sean Blitzstein, in psychiatry. The Assistant Dean for Phase I Curriculum, Dr. Amy Lin. The Associate Dean for Medical Education, Dr. Amanda Osta. The Assistant Dean for Advising uh, and Career Planning, Dr. Charlie Inburaboon and Assistant Dean for Student Affairs, Dr. Claudia Boucher-Berry. Then we have several of the prominent faculty members who serve as the student's physician house advisors who are here today and will be assisting their students as they don their white coats. Dr. Anna Lepowska, Dr. Marcy Lara, Dr. Mahesh Patel, Dr. Matthew Whithouse, Dr. Aaron Hickey, and Dr. Sean McCann. I then want to take a moment to recognize and welcome all the family and friends of our students, as well as those of you who are joining, joining via our live stream. We thank you for being here to honor these dedicated students, and we're thrilled to have you share this occasion with us today. In the spirit of building a better future in healing, I would like to take a few moments to acknowledge that UIC resides on the traditional territories of the three fire peoples, the Ojibwe, the Odawa, and the Badawanami. This area was also a site of trade, gathering, and healing for more than a dozen other native tribes. What's more, the state of Illinois is currently home to more than 75,000 tribal members, such that the Chicagoland area is currently home to one of the largest and most diverse urban native communities in the US. 
We recognize that indigenous peoples are the traditional stewards of the land that we now occupy, living here long before Chicago was a city and still thriving here today. As we work together today on these territories and in the year ahead, we must remember our responsibility, especially as a land-grant university, an Asian American and Native American Pacific Islander-serving institution, and Hispanic-serving institution, to find ways to right the historic wrongs of colonization and state violence, and to build bridges with and support indigenous communities' struggles for self-determination and sovereignty. The white coat ceremony itself is a tradition that was started by the Arnold P. Gold Foundation in 1993 as a way to emphasize humanism and medicine at the start of medical education. This emphasis on humanism and medicine is exemplified by our chapter of the Gold Humanism Honor Society, or GHHS. GHHS members are fourth-year students who have shown themselves to be exemplars of humanistic patient care. The students given this honor are selected by a committee based upon their demonstrated excellence in humanistic clinical care, leadership, compassion, and dedication to service, with input from both faculty and student peers. There's a pin that will be provided to our entering students today to wear on your white coat as a symbol of your aspiration to demonstrate these qualities yourselves on a day-to-day -day basis. It's such a pleasure to see everyone coming in to take their seats. This will be an even more impressive sight once they're all in their white coats. Welcome to everyone. I'm now very pleased to present the Chancellor of the University of Illinois at Chicago, Dr. Mari Lynn Miranda. A leader in geospatial health informatics, she took office as the 10th Chancellor of the University of Illinois at Chicago in July of 2023. She's also a faculty member in our Department of Pediatrics and in the Department of Mathematics, Statistics, and Computer Science. Chancellor Miranda previously served as provost of Notre Dame through 2021 and was a faculty member in its applied and computational mathematics and statistics department. She led Notre Dame as provost in their academic response to the COVID-19 pa pandemic, helped drive efforts to increase faculty and student diversity, resulting in the most diverse first year class in school history in 2021 started a transformational leaders program to provide resources to students from underserved backgrounds, and led a bottom-up strategic planning process that engaged more than 600 members of the faculty. Chancellor Miranda is director of the Children's Environmental Health Initiative, uh, which she has brought here to Chicago with her, a research, education, and outreach organization committed to fostering environments where all people can prosper. The initiative is best known for its work on childhood lead exposure, contributing to the CDC's decision to set a more protective standard for childhood blood lead levels and develop strategies for combating lead in drinking water. CEHI's most recent work fo focuses on racial residential segregation and how segregated neighborhoods experience greater exposure to social and environmental stressors which in turn drives health and educational disparities. Through the course of her research career, she has been principal investigator or co-investigator on over $75 million in research funding. Chancellor Miranda is a Phi Beta Kappa, summa cum laude graduate of Duke University, where she earned a bachelor's in mathematics and economics and was named a Truman Scholar. She has a PhD and master's from Harvard University, where she held a National Science Foundation Graduate Research Fellowship. Chancellor Miranda is also a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. We're delighted to have her here as our chancellor, and especially delighted to have her here today 
to welcome you. Good morning. I'm so very delighted to be here with all of you, the family and friends who are here, um, but especially our students. Uh, and I will direct my remarks um, mostly to our students, but I hope that they will have resonance for the whole crowd that it's here. So on the way from you know, your childhood to arriving here today, you've made a series of choices. And you very specifically made the choice to go to medical school. And that is an amazing choice to have made. It's a choice to live a life in service to others. It's a choice to take scientific inquiry, combine it with social skills and an understanding of the communities in which we reside and wrap all of those things together to provide the best possible health care that you can. Right? And not only have you made a choice to go to medical school, so I know if you're here that you're very talented and you made a choice to use those talents by going to medical school, but in particular, you made the choice to go to medical school at the University of Illinois, Chicago. And what you surely know about us by now is that our commitment to ensuring that very high quality healthcare is delivered to everyone, not just people who have insurance, not just people who are uh, well-resourced, but to everyone, regardless of their economic status, their social status, their mental health status, whatever, whatever presents to us, we are compelled and moved and joyful in the opportunity to care for those people. And that is the kind of medical school that you've come to, and you will have experience with that not down the road, you know, 10 years from now when you're finally working in a clinic, but embedded in your entire education here at UIC, you will have the opportunity to talk about what does it mean to deliver health care that reaches everybody in the population and provides quality to everybody in the population. We spend a lot of time in our lives thinking about what's the right choice to make? What's the right choice to make? Should I do this or should I do that? And what I would say to all of you is that life is, <clears throat> there's a little bit of what's the right choice to make, but life is really about making your choices right. So you made the choice to come here and there's a series of things that go along with coming here. And what I would encourage all of you to think about is how do you work to make this choice right for you? How do you take advantage of all of the resources that are available to you? How do you develop friendships and connections with your fellow classmates, with students who are more advanced in the program, with the faculty who are here? Everything you make, you'll make a whole series of choices every day that are all about making your choice to come to, the UI, to, come to UIC's College of Medicine, making that choice right. And I encourage you to think hard about that part of your life. So that's the first part of my message. Work to make your choice to come to this amazing place, make that choice right for you. The second part of my message is I think what parents in the audience might agree with, so I have three children myself, um, is that we are meant to teach our children, but we actually learn quite a bit from our children as well. And one of the most important things that I learned from my second child, my daughter Marielle, is she is an individual who believed from, very, from a very, very young age that life is to be celebrated. So you, when they were very little, her older brother would catch a frog and bring it home for her to see it carried in in a bucket, and she would say, Tom C. caught a frog, let's celebrate, right? And she had a very particular idea in mind what it meant to celebrate. It meant that you lit a candle, and whoever had, had done the thing that was worth celebrating got to blow out the candle, the way that we usually do with birthday cakes, right? But there was no reason in her mind to limit this to once a year on your birthday. 
So we had a candle stuck in the mashed potatoes because Thompson caught a frog. We had a, a candle stuck in the, um, you know, a, a candle stuck in a bowl of ice cream because Viviana learned to count to 10. We had candles stuck in everybody's food because we all, okay, and here's where I age myself, we all learned the Macarena, <laughs> okay? And, you know, medical school is hard. Let's not joke around about that. Medical school is hard, but there are going to be things along the way that are well worth celebrating. So I would encourage all of you to, in the middle of the, the hardness of being in medical school, to recognize that medical school isn't a start and then one thing to celebrate at the end. It is a process of growing as an individual, growing as a future physician, and there are many points along the way that are well worth celebrating. And I would encourage you to celebrate them, and I would encourage you to be in communication with your friends and family, to tell them about the things that they're celebrating so that they can celebrate with you. Because I can feel the energy in the room, all of the good well wishes that they are extending to all of you. And that's a great fortune that we all carry when we have people who have our backs and who are encouraging us, but also who are celebrating with us. Congratulations on joining us here at the University of Illinois, Chicago. We are so very happy to have you as part of our community. Thank you so very much for those comments. You certainly contributed to the energy in the room. Um, I next would like to introduce uh, our College of Medicine Executive Dean. Mark Rosenblatt has served as Executive Dean of the University of Illinois College of Medicine since 2019. He has held um, the, the uh, position of Associate Vice Chancellor for Physician Affairs as well at UI Health since 2022. Prior to becoming Executive Dean, Dr. Rosenblatt served as the Illinois Lions Charles I. Young Chair, Professor and Head of the Department of Ophthalmology here. And before 2014, he was director of the Margaret M. Dyson Vision Research Institute and vice chair of ophthalmology at Weill Cornell Medical College. Dr. Rosenblatt is an internationally recognized clinician scientist. As director of the Corneal Regenerative Medicine Laboratory, he leads groups of scientists investigating the mechanism of corneal peripheral nerve regeneration following injury and the use of nano-engineered biomaterials for use in stem cell delivery to the ocular surface. This work in regenerative medicine has been funded by the National Institutes of Health, the Department of Defense, Research to Prevent Blindness, the Falk Family Foundation, and the Tri-Institutional Stem Cell Initiative. Dr. Rosenblatt is a graduate of the University of Miami Miller School of Medicine, its honors program in medical education, and the combined MD-PhD program receiving his PhD in biochemistry, cell, and molecular biology. He also subsequently completed his MBA at the New York University Stern School and his master's in health administration here at UIC. Dr. Rosenblatt completed his ophthalmology residency and combined clinical research fellowship in corneal disease at the Massachusetts Eye and Ear Infirmary at Harvard Medical School. He's a member of the Alpha Omega Alpha and Omicron Delta Kappa Honor Societies. I'm pleased to welcome Dean Rosenblatt to the podium. Thank you, Dean Curry. Um, good morning. It's absolutely my pleasure to be here today. It's wonderful to come together. Um, I'm fortunate as Executive Dean to be present for a number of celebrations. Uh, and as Chancellor Miranda mentioned, often these happen at the end. This is a celebration at the beginning and is really one of my favorite celebrations given that this is going to be a tremendous and transformative journey uh, for our medical students and they're an amazing class. So I would like to start by giving them a round of applause at the very beginning. I welcome you all here, of course, family members, friends, loved ones, and especially this University of Illinois College of Medicine entering class of 2023. We're very excited to welcome you to our college and also to this profession. 
you are entering an amazing college of medicine. Um, it's large, it's diverse, and we take pride in providing an excellent medical education and learning environment that is active and engaging. Medical school will present you with some of your greatest challenges in life thus far, and also, of course, many of your greatest triumphs. Uh, there'll be times of laughter, times when you shed some tears, times when you feel joy, times when you feel sorrow, and sometimes many of these uh, experiences will happen in the same day, or maybe even simultaneously, quite frankly. You'll experience these immense emotions with many of these in attendance here, your new peers, as well as with your patients and their families. Each day will undoubtedly bring to you something new, new challenges, uh, new accomplishment. Today, of course, we stand here to share in one of the symbolic entries into the world of medicine, the white coat ceremony. Allow me to tell you just a little bit about this white coat and some of its uses. It will be used to protect your clothing. That's kind of obvious. But maybe you'll also use it a bit as a backpack. I can remember trying to shove multiple Washington manuals and other things into my pockets, uh, like I was a pack mule sometimes. You might use it as an umbrella as you make your way between buildings, and hopefully you won't have to use it as an umbrella today. Um, sometimes you may even use it as a sleeping bag during those long nights, um, days in the clinical environment to get a quick nap between your responsibilities. Quite frankly, some weeks it will barely be white at all, but it will accompany you from this day forward. The white coat garners respect from patients and their families, so it's important that you respect, earn, and justify their trust in you. Remember that this is not merely your coat. This coat has been handed down to you. The white coat that you're receiving today has been funded from donations from our College of Medicine alumni. This is a tangible expression of our alumni community's enthusiasm about your fourth step towards becoming a physician and furthering their work in the generations to come. We and they celebrate your entry to a profession in which you are so clearly needed for patient care, research, teaching, and public health. The COVID pandemic has taught us many things, but it has proven time and time again how much difference physicians can make in the lives of individual patients and the communities we serve. Years from now, hopefully not too many years from now, we hope that you will have the pleasure to welcome incoming medical students with white coats of their own as our alumni. Once again, congratulations on your acceptance to this noble and wonderful profession, and welcome to the University of Illinois College of Medicine. Welcome. Now I have the distinct pleasure of introducing Dr. Monica Vela, this year's keynote speaker. Each year, a prominent member of the College of Medicine faculty, one who embodies the tenets of professionalism and humanism that we celebrate here today, delivers the keynote address. This year, Dr. Monica Vela has been selected for this honor. Uh, Professor Vela joined the University of Illinois College of Medicine and di as director of the Hispanic Center of Excellence in 2021. Um, I'm very proud that I was able to recruit her. Um, we recruited her away from a prominent institution. Um, she was the former Associate Vice Chair for Diversity and Associate Dean at the University of Chicago Prisker School of Medicine, but of course she chose to come here. Prior to coming to UICOM, she spent 16 years directing a required course for first-year medical students entitled Health Equity, Advocacy, and Anti-Racism, which provided a structural competency foundation in health equity and advocacy training. Her coursework is the only coursework in the extant literature shown to improve diversity of the medical school applicants and improve the cultural climate among medical students. Her work is extensive, her scholarly work. Importantly, it has been cited in the Supreme Court writ, Fisher versus University of Texas at Austin, the most important writ to date on the use of race and admissions process in higher education. Dr. Vela published a policy statement establishing standards of cultural and linguistic competency in the care of limited English proficiency patients. Her research has demonstrated the dangers of allowing non-accredited learners care for limited English proficient patients, including miscommunications, medical errors, and distrust. 
Dr. Vela and colleagues established LIDERES, the first national leadership development program for Hispanic faculty in medical education. She has won many major awards, including Favorite Faculty Teaching Award, um, 12 years at a distinct medical school graduating classes. Since joining the University of Illinois College of Medicine, she has been very, very busy. Dr. Vela has successfully applied for, and of course has been awarded, new funding from HRSA to support our Hispanic Center of Excellence programs to further diversify the physician and healthcare workforce pipeline. We are absolutely thrilled to have Dr. Vela as your keynote speaker today. Monica. The White Coat Ceremony was started um, the year after I graduated from medical school, and so I feel doubly honored to, part to participate in your White Coat Ceremony today. You've heard it before, and so it must be true. You are about to embark on one of the most significant and absolutely thrilling journeys of your lifetime. In a few minutes, each of you will be asked to put on your white coat for maybe the second time. And over the next four years, you'll have multiple opportunities to grow the fabric of who you will become as a physician. That fabric must be resilient and tough. It must be flexible as well. As you grow, you will imbue the fabric with the values and the virtues which you must never desert. The values and virtues which will never desert you. Values which will buoy you in your dark times and values which will help you soar in the good times. As you place that white coat on your body, as you recite the Hippocratic Oath, Consider how you will live up to those values. If you allow yourself to be guided by those values, you will not lose your way. I'm honored to share with you the values that I have most treasured in my journey of over 30 years and which continues to this day. The first value is equity. All the scientific achievements in the world, while we must be grateful for them, would be worthless if they are not equitably accessible to the most vulnerable among us. I read a study on bias recently that demonstrated that patients are highly adept at detecting bias in their physicians, and that detection of bias determines whether they will trust their physician, whether they will return to see that physician, and whether they will follow through with the medical care they are being offered. If we want to be at our best, if we want to deliver the best possible care, we must learn to recognize and temper our bias. How will you work on your bias? How will you learn to care for every single person that enters your room? Not equally, but equitably, which means that every person gets what they need in order to thrive as individuals. This requires that you lean in and listen and be silent. This is not a quality that physicians are well known for. <laughs> it is a quality that you can learn to grow. The second value is respect. Respect for your patients, respect for your colleagues, respect for everyone on your team. Respect for a patient's right to choose, which has been dramatically challenged in the last few years in our country. Respect for patients' autonomy for own, their own body. Respect for the intergenerational trauma that we cannot see or detect on exam, but that we must ask our patients about, and we must be prepared to listen. We must learn to respect the patient's history, their language, their culture, and all aspects of their intersecting identities. Respect is the first step on the road to inclusivity, and only with inclusivity can we deliver the best care possible to everyone. The third value I have cherished, the one that's gotten me into most trouble, is courage. Courage to understand that medicine is much more than a science, 
courage is to understand that it's much more than a job. It does not end at 5 p.m. It is a vocation. You must dedicate your entire life to understand it. You must recognize that you will never learn everything you need in order to care for your patients in the classroom or in the lab or even over 30 years. You must have the courage to learn from your patients and to advocate for them. You must have the courage, and this is the tough one, to stand up to inequitable systems of oppression every day. You must have courage in the face of uncertainty, something physicians do not like, something medical students do not like, because there's so much that we do not know or understand to date. The fourth value is trustworthiness. Unfortunately, our medical profession has not always been trustworthy. It was not trustworthy when we allowed forced sterilizations of indigenous peoples and others under the California Eugenics Act. Think about that. It was the law, and we followed the law. Many of us have come into this, of pr this profession because we are very good at following rules. I am asking you to pay attention to what happens around you, to the socio-political stage, and think about whether the law is right and whether sometimes it's appropriate to follow, not follow the law. I want you to know that the medical profession has not been trustworthy and that we often supported scientific research that harmed black families. It has not been equitable in its history regarding LGBTQ communities and immigrants and any number of other marginalized communities. But it's our responsibility and it is now your responsibility having entered the profession to restore that trust. It is our privilege to restore justice. The fifth value is humility, because mistakes will be made. We need to take ownership of those mistakes. We need to be big enough to apologize and big enough to thank those who have called us in. We must be humble enough to review our practices and our processes and be willing to make change where change is due. We must be humble enough to restore justice. The sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth have been honesty, integrity, compassion, and service. And I don't have time to go into all of those in great detail, but I will tell you that of all the values and virtues I've learned to cherish and work on, work on, I cherish none more than love. Love of my fellow human. I implore you to engage with each other and to find love for each other. This road is difficult. It can be challenging. It can be exhausting. It can be exalting. But you need not travel alone. I urge you not to do it alone. In fact, on the very first day of medical school, when I walked into the first classroom, there was a young woman wildly waving me over. And I turned to look, who is she waving over? Is it me? I don't know this woman. But I went and sat next to her only to realize she'd forgotten her glasses that day and thought I was somebody else. <laughs> she went on to become the greatest friend of my life. We went through medical school today together different residencies, but together. We've raised our children together. We speak to each other um, morning, noon, and night. I called her on the way here for some courage. You will find um, some incredible people in your future. Surround yourself with your peers, your teachers, and your deans at the bedside, in the operating room, in the classroom, and those late nights in the library where they can bear witness to your trials and also your tribulations and support you in both. You are so fortunate 
to be traveling. Indeed, I'm, I've got a little FOMO. You are traveling with, an, with a cadre of incredibly intelligent, diverse, service-oriented, and mission-focused peers who have been scrutinized and selected for their commitment to humanity and their ability to recognize and find the humanity in others. Have faith that the admissions team, with all their incredible years of experience and wisdom, has not made a mistake. Each and every one of you belongs here, and each and every one of you will play a significant role in the future of medicine and the lives of your patients. As you move forward together, think about which values and virtues you've already been endowed with by your parents and your loved ones, by your friends. Think about what values you need to work on. Think about what values you want shining through your white coat as you enter the rooms of patients who are gifting you with the greatest privilege, the privilege of collaborating with them in their care during their most vulnerable times. Finally, I wish you great joys. The joy of connection, the joy of helping others, the joy of overcoming challenges, of learning and stretching. There will be so much stretching and the great joy of all, the greatest joy of all, purpose, purpose in your lives and your vocation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Vela, for such a wonderfully articulate reminder of not only the joys and rewards of being a physician, but also the challenges Let's now turn our attention to the white coat that we will now present to you. That you receive this white coat today represents a public acknowledgement in the presence of family, friends, and our faculty that you recognize your obligations to the profession. For those in the audience not familiar with our UI approach to mentoring and advising, each of our medical students is assigned to one of eight College of Medicine communities which we very intentionally and affectionately represent as capital C-O-M, College of Medicine, Unities. And each of our students will receive their white coat alongside other members of their community by their physician house advisor, or for those that couldn't be here today, one of our other clinical faculty. Our communities are named for notable faculty and alumni of the college, ranging from the 1890s to the 1980s as evidence of the long history of our institutional commitment to diversity and inclusion, we will note that even among those very earliest alumni, there were both women and people of color. These figures include pioneers in surgery, in women's health, in pharmacogenetics, epidemiology and public health, including one of the most influential people ever to serve as US Surgeon General. We also recognize one whose potential was never fully realized, a stellar young physician scientist, teacher, and mentor of medical students whose career was cut short by HIV AIDS in the early 1990s. So I now invite Dr. Heather Hyman, the Associate Dean for Undergraduate Medical Education, to come to the podium and introduce our communities and announce the names of our students as they cross the stage to receive their white coat. Dr. Hyman. Thank you, Dean Curry. So family and friends, fee please feel free to cheer and celebrate as your student receives their white coat. Sometimes people aren't sure they can do that, and we want that. Um, students, when you exit the stage, we ask that you sign the Professionalism in Medicine book containing a copy of the oath that you will recite with us at the end of the ceremony. By signing this book, you are agreeing to those standards of responsibility and trust that we spent a long time talking about this week and especially yesterday. So Dr. Aaron Hickey is a faculty physician in internal medicine and the physician house advisor for the Jose Choca House. She will be bestowing the white coat on the students in the Choca House along with Dean Lynn. 
Dr. Jose Ignacio Choca was born in 1959 in Havana, Cuba. After earning his bachelor's degree at Johns Hopkins University, Choca received both MD and PhD degrees from the University of Illinois College of Medicine. He took great pride in his work to help minority medical students continue in school, and his passion for research on sensory pathways and his award-winning teaching continued despite learning he was HIV positive in 1991. He died of complications of AIDS in 1994 at the age of 35. I will now read the names of the students in the Choka House, and please feel free to applaud joyfully for your doctor-to-be. Athire Ambikumar. <laughs> Gloria Cheng. <laughs> Mira Serencioni. Margarita de Alba. <laughs> Toru Fibaresima. Avi Fogel. Reed Jaworski. Harish Kesavan. Alfredo Martinez Ruiz. <laughs> Donald Macio. Casey McCarthy. <laughs> Yarid Murrah. Angel Nye. <laughs> Ryan Park. Krupa Patel. Clarice Pierce. Jordan Pruce.
Kate Rao. Giselle Stridinger. Alan Tan. Thomas Tenhula. Bernadette Tudor. Congratulations to all the students in the Choka House. Dr. Matt Whithouse is a faculty physician in family medicine and the physician house advisor for the Rivers Frederick House. He will be bestowing the white coat on the students in the Frederick House along with Dean Mboraboon. In 1897, Dr. Rivers Frederick became the first African American to graduate from the Chicago College of Physicians and Surgeons, known today as the UI College of Medicine, with a medical degree. In 1899, Frederick returned to Louisiana because he wanted to return to his place of birth and assist those in great need. Frederick joined the fewer than 50 black physicians in Louisiana who cared for the state's black population of half a million. He played an instrumental role in the formation of the local NAACP branch and remained a life member. And in 1934, Frederick became the first vice president of the National Medical Association. So I will um, invite Dr. Abor Boone and Dr. Whithouse to the stage and I will now read the names of the students in the Frederick House. Malak Abdul Salam. <laughs> Nora Chambers. Shane Claffey. <laughs> Diana Dangor. <laughs> Rohith. Or color. <laughs> Matthew Escalona. Miguel Gutierrez. <laughs> Leah Hansel. Elisa Herrera. <laughs> Olivia Jasbutis. <laughs> Nick.
Nancy Call. Quinn Laurie. Caitlin Liu. Tyler Miller. Erica Nadi. Emma Papano. Pablo Puente. Joseph Rojas Flores. Sanders Solomon. Zoe Strong. Taylor Webb. Congratulations to all the students in the Frederick House. So Dr. Mahesh Patel is an infectious disease physician and the physician house advisor for the Isabella Garnett House, and he will be bestowing the white coat on students in the Garnett House along with Dean Hasnain. So you all can start to come up to the stage. On August 22nd, 1872, Isabella Garnett was born into the earliest African-American family to arrive in the Evanston, Illinois area. She worked as a school nurse for two years before enrolling in Chicago College of Physicians and Surgeons and obtaining her medical degree in 1901, at which point she was one of the first African-American women physicians in Illinois. Garnett practiced privately until 1914, when she and her husband opened the Evanston Sanitarium on the upper floors of their home, the first African-American medical center north of the Chicago Loop. So I'll now read the names of the students in the Garnett House. Rocio Alberto Cruz. Daksh Bhargava. Megan B. Nicole Chang. (laughs) 
Gabriela De La Rosa. Adriana Anna. Victoria Gaylor. Keith Klein. Ryan Lee. Maxwell Menconi. Sharenya Menon. Victoria Millard. Trevor Peterson. Alex Pietrasanta Witron. Nathan Schuler. Robert Schwartz. Nasiruddin Sheikh. Matthew, Matthew Stach. Taylor Tomasek. Jane Uday. <laughs> Megan Zhao. Congratulations to all of the students in the Garnett House. <laughs> Dr. Marcy Lara is an internal medicine physician and is the physician house advisor for the Olga Jonasson House. Dr. Lara will be bestowing the white coat on students in the Jonasson House with Dr. Sean Blitstein. 
Dr. Olga Jonasson was born in Peoria, Illinois, the child of Swedish immigrants. She completed her medical degree at the University of Illinois in 1958. When Jonasson decided to apply for a surgical residency, there were very few women practicing in this area. She completed residency in 1964, followed by three fellowships, one of which was at Massachusetts General Hospital in transplantation immunobiology. She joined the faculty of the University of Illinois in 1967, where she developed the Division of Transplantation. She later, at the Ohio State University, became the first woman to head the Department of Surgery at a major university medical center. So Dr. Lara and Dr. Blitzstein should come to the stage, and we'll now welcome the students who are joining the Jonathan House to the stage as well. Julian Akabal. Yeah. Bilal Asfour. Yeah. Isaiah Bell. Natalie Barand. <laughs> Vanella Chalagondla. Gloria Choi. <laughs> Victoria DeFranco. Arvind Draffen. <laughs> Min Jung Kim. Gina Costandi. Nathan Kumar. Tasha Merchant. <laughs> Dean Mohindas. Emily Petrucci. <laughs> David Russico. <laughs> Ryan Rutherford. Darren Sini. <laughs> A 
Arthur Sheely. Astrid Stanley. Shengxing Tong. Samantha Udarby. Katie Wu. Neb Savala. And congratulations to all the students in the Jonathan House. Dr. McCann, an emergency medicine physician, is the physician house advisor for the Arno Motulski House, and he will be bestowing the white coats on the students in the Motulski House along with Dean Lynn. Arno Motulski was born in Germany to Jewish parents. He came to the United States in 1941 as a refugee from Nazi Germany, after first being sent to an internment camp in Vichy, France. In 1944, he began medical school at the University of Illinois as a soldier, private first class. In 1957, he established a division of medical genetics at the University of Washington. There, he founded the field of pharmacogenetics. He mentored hundreds of fellows and students over 50 years, including 1985 Nobel Prize winner, Dr. Joseph Goldstein. So Dr. McCann and Dr. Lynn, can you come to center stage? And we'll also now welcome the students from the Motulski House to the stage. Nizar Abu Noor. <laughs> Ahmed El Zain. Chika Odili Anikamadu. <laughs> Abid Anwar. Samantha Arenas. <laughs> Sandra Campos. Nicole Corrigals. <laughs> Thomas Dunan. <laughs> Reese Gagonis.
David Wynn. Paige Jones. Daniel Kim. Kaylee Kozicki. Tobias Kremsmeyer. Sarah Lazenby. Kimberly Liu. Justin Reich. <laughs> Taylor Savage. <laughs> Isabella Stonkovich. Nicholas Tamaris. <laughs> Catherine Shu. Jessalyn Yam. <laughs> Kelly Yang. Congratulations, Motulski House, and welcome to UICOM. <laughs> Dr. Lepowska is a gastroenterologist physician and the physician house advisor for the Julius Richmond House. She will not be available today, and so Dean Boucher Berry is going to bestow the white coats on her behalf in the, for the students in the Richmond House, along with Dean Imbora Boone. Dr. Julius Richmond, a member of our class of 1939, was a towering figure in pediatrics and public health. During his internship and residency at Cook County Hospital, he witnessed the profound effect of poverty on child health. During his career as a faculty member, first here and later at what is now called the Upstate Medical Center in Syracuse, New York, he documented how poverty threatened the health and development of young children, presaging perhaps some of Chancellor Miranda's current work. And as a federal official during the Kennedy and Johnson administrations, he founded the Head Start program and developed the concept of neighborhood health centers. In 1977, President Jimmy Carter appointed Richmond as the 12th Surgeon General of the United States and Assistant Secretary for Health. As Surgeon General, Richmond issued the Smoking and Health Report to advance life-saving public health change through tobacco control as well as the landmark 1979 public policy declaration entitled the Surgeon General's Report on Health Promotion and Disease Prevention. 
So Dean Boucherberry and Dean Mboraboon can come to center stage and we'll welcome the students from the Richmond House. Jessica Banasi. Sarah Clark. Sean Cook. Olivia Duntuluri. Kendall Free. Ahana Gupta. Marwan Hamada. <laughs> Sukjin Hong. Brad Isada. <laughs> Christina Langone. Daniel Lopez. <laughs> Ebony Mokanu. Natalia Perez Baez. <laughs> Madison Pineda. <laughs> Lauren Rosh. Stephanie Sananu. <laughs> Kristen Stark. <laughs> Rhea Subramanian. Kama Uzuku. <laughs> Logan Van Pocky.
Colleen Wu. Gregory House. Congratulations and welcome to the students in the Richmond House. Dr. Priyanka Gokhale, an obstetrics and gynecologist physician, is the physician house advisor for the David Sackett House. She's unable to join us today, so Dean Boucher Barry will be bestowing the white coats on the students in the Sackett House, along with Dean Hasnain. David Sackett is considered a founder of the discipline of evidence-based medicine and was at the forefront of developing the medical education strategy of problem-based learning. After graduating from the University of Illinois College of Medicine in 1960, he became interested in how methods of epidemiology could be applied to healthcare questions about the diagnosis, prognosis, etiology, and treatment of clinical problems. Dr. Sackett created a graduate program to teach clinicians how to do healthcare research. In 1993, he became the first chair of the Cochrane Collaboration Steering Group. So if Dean Boucherberry and Dean Hasnane will come to the stage, we will welcome the students from the Sackett House as well. Christian Ardeman. Kathy De La Torre. <laughs> Christina Du. Jason Fernando. <laughs> Takira Fisher. Andres Gascon. <laughs> Jamie Hayes. Jasper Hogue. <laughs> McKenna Isley. Amanda Jerosic. <laughs> Catherine Coe. <laughs> Andrew Laval. Luke Redlin. <laughs> Kira Rigg. <laughs> K 
Kahan Shah. John Silberstein. Yana Smith. Annie Stahlfeld. Aishwarya Talakar. Erica Walton. <laughs> Mary Wolosen. Bella Robel. Yaron Zaret. Congratulations to all the students in the Sackett House. Dr. Rachel King is an internal medicine faculty, and she's the physician house advisor for the Rochelle Yaros House. Dr. King is unable to join us today, so Dean Boucher-Berry will be bestowing the white coats on the students in the Yaros House, along with Dr. Sean Blitstein. Rochelle Yaros immigrated to the United States from Russia as a teenager. In the US, she worked in a sweatshop before enrolling as the first woman to enter in the College of Physicians and Surgeons in Boston. Yaros spent the next 40 years on our faculty at the University of Illinois College of Medicine in Women's Health. She was a resident of Hull House, which is on this campus, the famous social settlement that nurtured leaders in social welfare. She was a leader in the birth control movement and she challenged the attitudes, policies, and practices that denied women access to birth control information and devices. She established the first birth control clinics throughout the city of Chicago. She was a dedicated campaigner for sex education for women. By 1930, Chicago had eight birth control clinics throughout the city, more than any other American city. So I'll welcome the Yarrow students to the stage. Raj Barot. Victor Berrios. Suki Chung. Sam Fatizade. <laughs> Emmy Francic. <laughs> Lauren Grabos.
Tazina Khan. Karen Mao. Paul Christian Martin. Caitlin McBride. Caleb Mirabal. Sammy Musulmani. Allison Raimundo. Bria Robinson. Abdella Saleh. Anthony Sanchez Forteza. John Sarah Manolis. Ali Sato. Ashna Shah. Antonia Theodosakis. Anna Vasilevskaya. So first, congratulations to the Yaros House. And now a huge congratulations, students. We are tremendously excited for you and proud of you. And we ask that you now stand and turn to face the audience and those who are here who care so much about you. Let's have a round of applause.
Okay, students. Students, please be seated. We are um, getting towards the end, and you'll be able to give hugs and kisses to these folks who obviously want to do that. <laughs> um, so. Within the profession, it's a long-standing tradition that we make a formal promise and oath upon assuming the physician's role. While you are not yet physicians, we know that through your dedication in the first two years of medical school, um, you are, um, uh, and, and then your dedication in the second two years of medical school in the clinical environment, in all of that time, you are obligated to respect the principles and ideals of this oath. And this oath that was taken today was actually constructed for this ceremony by members of the class of 2024. Dean Amanda Osta is the Associate Dean for Medical Education and Professor of Clinical Pediatrics and Internal Medicine, and I will ask her now to come forward and administer the oath. Thank you so much, Dean Hyman. We could not be more thrilled to welcome each of you to our College of Medicine. Congratulations again to each of you and to all of your families. The University of Illinois College of Medicine now asks you to receive, as you received your white coat today, to pledge the following commitments to your peers, your instructor, instructors, your patients, and the profession. I urge you to think upon the meaning and significance of this oath as you join me in bowing to uphold its tenets. At this time, I ask the students please stand and recite the medical student oath with me. We're going to do it all in unison today. I commit myself to the responsibilities of the medical profession while recognizing its challenges and privileges. I pledge to remain steadfast in my dedication to a lifetime of learning, practicing, and advancing the art and science of medicine even in times of change and hardship. I vow that my patient will always be my priority as I strive to promote their holistic well-being and quality of life through education, prevention, and care. I will serve my patients with empathy, compassion, and humility. I will appreciate each patient's narrative, protect their privacy, and respect their autonomy. I promise to care for myself so that I may best care for others. I will foster my mental, spiritual, and physical well-being. I pledge to respect interdisciplinarity and collaborate with the other healthcare professionals to provide the highest standard of care. I will advocate for equitable and evidence-based healthcare. I will be cognizant of my biases and hold myself accountable to society for the trust placed in me. I promise to acknowledge historic injustices and to strive to dismantle persistent disparities in our healthcare system. I aspire to have the courage to advocate for my patients and seek to empower others to challenge existing inequities. I acknowledge my debt of gratitude from my patients, colleagues, and mentors from who I will learn. I am humbled by the opportunity to become a physician appreciative of those who support me and look forward to mentoring future generations. May this class hold fast to the ideals and passion with which we take this pledge. This oath I make freely and upon my hour. Thank you, you can be seated. Now I would like to proceed to another important part of our white coat ceremony, the family, faculty, and friends oath. We will be reciting this oath twice, in English and in Spanish. Assistant Dean of Student Affairs, Dean Bashaberry, will lead you in our family, faculty, and friends oath in English. Good morning, everyone. Congratulations again to the students and to all of the families. Just as we have asked our students to pledge their commitment, integrity, and respect to the profession of medicine, we now would like to provide their families, friends, and others here today to support them an opportunity to pledge their commitment to the success of these students and their respect for the journey they are beginning today. As Chancellor Miranda said earlier, the road to becoming a doctor is not easy. The family, friends, and loved ones that are here today have helped these students get this far, and they will need your continued support throughout the rest of medical school to help ensure their success. So family, when they show up with dirty clothes, 
and they ask you to wash them, please, this is part of your oath. You have to help support them, OK? <laughs> All right, so members of the audience, please rise if you are able and join me in the recitation of the family, faculty, and friends oath, which is projected on the screens. We will say the oath together. We solemnly swear to be a source of encouragement for the entering class of 2023 of the University of Illinois College of Medicine, recognizing that this will be a critical period in their professional formation we will give them the respect and consideration that they will need as students of medicine. We will help them to carry out their studies with conscience and dignity. We acknowledge the sacrifices that will be required and pledge our support. As parents, family, friends, and teachers, we make these promises enthusiastically and without reservation. You can all be seated, thank you. Now I would like to welcome Dr. Monica Vela to the stage to recite the Family, Faculty, and Friends Oath in Spanish. Thank you, Dean Boucherberry. To all our students and families, welcome, bienvenidos. Así como les hemos pedido a nuestros estudiantes que se comprometan, integren, y respeten la profesión de medicina, Ahora nos gustaría brindarles a sus familiares, amigos y otros aquí presentes apoyándolos la oportunidad de comprometerse al éxito de esos estudiantes y a respetar el camino que enseñan hoy. El camino para convertirse en médico no es fácil. La familia, los amigos y los seres queridos que están aquí hoy han ayudado a estos estudiantes a llegar muy lejos pero ellos necesitarán su apoyo cuan, continuo durante el resto del tiempo que les queda en la Escuela de Medicina para garantizar su éxito. Miembros de la audiencia, levántense y aúnense a mí en la recitación del juramento de la familia, la facultad y los amigos que se proyectan en las pantallas. Diremos este juramento juntos. I love it. <laughs> Listos y con gusto. Solemnemente juramos ser una fuente de ánimo para la clase entrante de 2023 de la Escuela de Medicina de la Universidad de Illinois, reconociendo que este periodo será crítico para la formación profesional, les demostraremos el respeto y la consideración que necesitan como estudiantes de medicina. Los ayudaremos a llevar a cabo sus estudios con conciencia y dignidad. Reconocemos los sacrificios que serán necesarios y les prometemos nuestro apoyo. Como padres, familia, amigos y profesores, hacemos estas promesas con entusiasmo y sin reservas. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you, Dr. Zvela, Dr. Berry. We've reached the end of this delightful ceremony. This is always one of the most, um, I, I love this sight, of the sea of white coats um, that's before us. We want to thank you, each and every one, for being here with us uh, today. I want to also call out the staff in the offices of Student Affairs and Curricular Affairs, <laughs> largely arrayed along the wall here. Thank you so much for all the hard work in organizing this year's ceremony, not only the ceremony, but the entire orientation week. We will not have a student recessional, um, but please do allow the platform party to recess uh, here first before you find your students uh, and begin to celebrate. Do we have any candles handy? <laughs> <laughs> Next year. 
<laughs> next year, the chancellor says. Um, I hope each and every member of the class leave the auditorium with pride in your accomplishments to date, as well as great aspirations for the future, and that those of you who love and support them will also leave here with great pride, not only on their behalf, but also in recognition of all you have done to help them on their journey. So congratulations. Everyone have a wonderful weekend. Thank you for being here.